Okay, hi everyone. In this video I'm going to go through photos which I did for a student fashion designer from uh, Harriet Watt Gallus Shields University um, and her outfits and the modelling shoot that we did, did in a studio in Edinburgh. Um, pretty much all these shots were done, uh, well these ones were initially done with a 50mm and uh, I was just amazed just by how sharp it comes out. I was using a giant uh, massive square soft box uh, off the side with about a 2k uh, light inside there and popping off at f11 uh, it was giving off some great sharpness to the images I was very impressed um, but I'm just going to go through the ones which uh, I like and why I don't like so that's one which I've already edited um, and I like that one so I'll click that as a pick and it's just more this is more looking at the kind of shapes and positions which I like so this was an idea the idea of the clothing was Russian dolls, um, and as you can see, we've got some Russian dolls on the grid. Well, like that pose. Nah, maybe not. Like that one. Keep that one. Not so much that one. That was quite cute. Good eye contact. Not really going for the smiling. That was very cute, but not really going for that. No, too straight on. Uh, okay, yeah, so Russian dolls. Uh, what are these? Are these just called Russian dolls, I think, or something? But it is meant to be kind of based around them, and you'll see that they've got these kind of funny little lips on them. Uh, which is what we had painted onto the models, as you can see there. So it's just going through, so that's the kind of style that we're looking for, slightly Russian-esque um, and uh, Russian doll-esque. So what am I looking for in these shots? Uh, most of these shots were done from here on in with the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens, usually around about F11, ISO 200. The shutter speed had to be at a 90th because the flashes that were there were really old school and had a very slow sync speed. Um, so they, I think it had to be at just under 120th of a second. Uh, whenever, I put it, whenever I put it up uh, beyond, in fact I'll show you, whenever you have a shutter speed which is too fast, here I shot at, let's see... Here I shot at 125th of a second and f16 and as you can see it's just a big black line uh, across the, the picture and that means the flash has only got a bit of the shot obviously of the camera at the side there. Same again there, it just didn't work. So going from 90th of a second to 125th of a second, that's why sync speeds are very important. You've got to make sure that you've got the right uh, sync speed and that's just one tiny little change of the shutter button and all of a sudden you're getting black images. You're like, what the heck's going on? So yeah, oh god, we took a lot. We took about 500 photos. So anyway, uh, I'll just try and go through these and uh, any interesting ones, I'll bring them up. Okay, on this one, this was a couple of shots which I liked, but what I wanted to do was the idea of that she'd been a doll that had just been thrown in the corner and she was all kind of tangled up. Um, as you can see, we've got her legs crossed, we've got her arms crossed and her body's crossed and her head's tilted. So that's all good, but the positioning of the arms, you've got to be very careful. This one kind of disappears behind her. So I then decided to move her arm out to the side. And even when it's out at the side, you've got to check the position of it there. You've got the elbow pointing kind of directly behind her. But that can start looking a little bit weird once you look at it for too long. So then I just said, stay exactly the same position you are. The whole body is exactly the same, but just twist your elbow around. So that is an important thing uh, to look at. Tiny little differences, but uh, you know some people might think that's a bit of a weird hand position. Uh, so yeah, just think about where el elbows are and stuff. So I'll click that one, I like that one. Here's a close-up of one of the uh, uh, Swiss chalet necklace things. Um, and uh, so yeah, always get kind of closer up of the details of the, the garments or the accessories that go with the garment as well. So I'll have to keep that one. Maybe keep that one as well. Okay, so this next model shot, we had a girl with a pink wig on and she's holding one of the the Russian dolls, if that's the name of them, and uh, we wanted it to look like here she was walking through the dolls on the ground. Uh, so we had her on her little tiptoes uh, going around. And in this shot you can see just over to the right we've got a massive softbox uh, which is just huge and that's shooting her straight into the face giving her very soft light uh, on the face there. Another thing I've got to really watch out for is every time she moves We've got wrinkles coming up on the dress there, so just got to be careful with that um, and just going up and just going yank, pull that down, sort that out. 
Okay, so this next model uh, shot, we've got this massive, big, fluffy coat um, and also the dress underneath, which we're trying to show off. So this is one where we've got either, we've got an open coat, uh, kind of shot, kind of holding the collars quite up. Um, but I think kind of, instead of the whole person, getting close in and get more of the shot of the person in the coat and everything there, just really looking at the fibres and the textures again. This is F13 and with my cheap, cheap lens, my second hand Tamron uh, 28 to 75, the detail is just stunning. Um, I'm actually inside of the flash at this point. If you look really carefully, you can see me inside the giant softbox. So that's how big the softbox was. Okay, now here's the next model. This is Emily. And uh, so this is one we wanted. So she looked like she'd been kind of a naughty person and had been stamping on all the little kind of Chinese, uh, not Chinese dolls, Russian doll things. Um, and yeah, her outfit again, it's kind of pretty crazy fashion. Was it fashion technology or fashion industry? Something like that that they do at the university. Um, and so here we've got her standing on one of the things there uh, and looking down and just getting lots of different kind of body poses and also what worked with her was doing a smile to the camera because re she's really got a cheeky smile to her which is uh, great for the camera. Again, my position changing creates a huge difference in like there she doesn't look so big, there she looks a lot bigger. Um, there she looks like she's got massive legs, she's really really tall. This one I like a lot, this is kind of my favourite um, of what, like she looks really naughty and like really like, I'm so proud of myself, look what I've done and really exaggerated pose there. So that looks pretty cool, I like that one. So with Emily we've also got this kind of um, scarf thingamabob which we started playing around with and uh, got some close ups there and I just think that looks really cool going on, uh, just loads of colours, loads of light, uh, just really interesting, she's got a really good face. Um, so I'll definitely work on these ones. And again, the, the catch light in the eye that we're getting is just huge. Again, softbox or umbrella kind of stuff. I'm more of a fan of the umbrella. I think the softbox, if it's a square softbox, I don't like the catch light quite as much in the eye that you do from a circular thing. I suppose that's kind of an idea of like how you like to look at this, you know, the effect of the sun coming down on you is never square. So soft, my advice, if any of you, Get an Octobox, which is a softbox, but it's got eight bits to it, and uh, thus is an Octobox. Um, and uh, oh yeah, brilliant! And uh, and that will give I, what I think is better catch lights in the eyes. Okay, now here here's an important one. Have a look at this. Shot one here, then shot two here. So this is just tiny change in the head position. Here, this photo just looked completely wrong because this eye over there is completely missing. It's hidden behind the nose. That's why if you go to the next photo, perfect positioning. You've got a little bit of uh, nose to the side of the cheek here, and you've got you can see both eyes looking straight at me. In fact, and again, you can still see me you can actually see me in the eye. So that's quite cool. I like that as well. Oh, and that's a bit closer again. Better. Now here was a challenge here, I was to get shots of the details, so this is the back of the dress and you know it just looks a bit odd if it's just nothing else to go with it. So we're trying to get shots where we could see the model, where we could see the outfit and yet still get the detail of the kind of top strap there. So this was got a little bit there, I think we got it there but is she looking happy? Not so much. There's looking a little bit brighter, there's looking a bit better. That one's probably my favourite, I think. So it's a case of getting in close, but also in wide as well. And now we're trying to get a group shot of all four of the models here. And this is quite difficult because we just had one big light at the side. And as you can see, I'm at my widest I can be, which is 28 millimetres. 90th of a second and F13. And what you can see is we've got nice bright, good light, good light, but then unfortunately uh, the person at the back behind the person at the front is obviously not getting the light. So we just had to be very careful about our positionings. So there, that kind of worked it out. Okay, here's another kind of off-the-cuff one which I quite like. This was, I don't think I was intentionally doing this one. Did I intentionally do this one? I might have done. But I like the idea of just like the, 
the dolls, the shoes, the legs, the tops. You don't need to see the models or anything like that. It's just kind of all about the kind of items in the actual photo. I thought that was quite cool. I quite like that one. Then we did a couple of ideas where it was all four people to try and show off as many dresses in the images as possible. And uh, it's kind of like maybe two against two on this on these couple of shots. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, it was just a lot of the time. It's like making sure dresses were like straightened out, not totally covered in creases or anything like that. Um, I thought it was quite cool, a little bit of tension going on, as you'd imagine Russians would have. Uh, and again, doll faces, so definitely making sure the girls weren't giving too much emotion or happiness. And then also at the same time, moustache in the background. Uh, two girls kind of fighting over something here. I thought that was quite an interesting kind of idea to play around with. Then we started doing couple shots. So it's two girls together and trying to see which ones complemented each other as well, uh, both in the way that they look, their heights, but also the outfits that they were wearing. And here again, this was all just with one big ass soft box off to the side, uh, shooting these shots. And uh, yeah, I'm fairly, fairly happy with how these all came out. I thought the models did a great job. I thought the lighting turned out lovely. The studio background, I'm going to have to work on all those photos and clean them up. Uh, but otherwise, I think uh, I think these turned out pretty cool. And what I would say, my advice here is, when you're shooting models, um, don't give them exact instructions. If you say, stand here, look there, and have a smile on your face, then they're going to struggle to change. What I like to do is give them an idea to work with, and then say, right, I'm going to take five, six, seven photos, and each time you guys just change your position, change your attitude, change your locations, just tiny bits each time, I will do seven or eight photos all in one go. And what to do is, what I say to them is I give them an idea, I give them a story behind it. So for example, these two girls, I was saying, uh, the girl at the front, is the big boss man. You know, she's got the big coat on, she's got the leather gloves on. She's got to act, look tough and uh, be kind of strong. But yet the girl at the back, who although is all very dainty, we're also saying she's a ninja. So she could like kill people with her eyes. So that's what I'm saying, like just give them, so then they kind of go, okay, one photo, I'm looking like this. Second photo, oh, I'm looking more like this. Third photo, I'm like, oh, more like this. And just let them play around with the idea. So make sure that, you know, if every photo that you take, you can say, a thousand words, you know how they say uh, uh, every photo is worth a thousand words. Well, what to do is give the people that are going to be in your photo a thousand words to work with. You know, don't just say stand there and look like this. I say give them some ideas, build up a story behind the shot that you're doing, and get them to do tiny little changes. It might be changing the eyes, might be changing the cheeks, might be changing the head, tilt, 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 tilt. All these tiny, tiny movements are what important in making a photo. And then the only problem is, if all the photos come out cool, it's a nightmare to try and edit because you've got so many cool photos. But here, yeah, I like this. This this one was really good. This one was boss man at the front, leather gloves on, looking mean. Meanwhile, the girl in the back, like, she's kind of looking down at the boss man, almost like, yes, you may be the boss, but I'm the, I'm the, I'm the lethal killer. Ugh, something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's just some ideas for you. And then there's the the designer there and her, her ninjas in the background and uh, getting some shots of them all together, I thought it was quite nice. And then them all killing each other, I thought it was quite nice. Uh, okay, so that was the shots from Fifi. Uh, I'll put her link on the blog down below. Cheers, bye-bye.